Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast with Joshua Latimer, where we discuss business, life, family, faith, struggle, fire, pain, and ultimately winning. It's time to take massive action. Look, I, I can't work harder on your life or business than you do. It's ultimately all on you. So, you know, God created all the food the birds would ever need, but he doesn't put it in their nest. You've got to go get it. 10 out of 10 people die. So how about doing something today that actually matters while you still can? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast. Hope you are prepped for an amazing weekend. I know that I am. I have date night tonight. Woo, woo, woo. Actually going to be doing some episodes with my wife that'll come out shortly. I got so many requests to have my wife back on. I know she's amazing. I'm just loving that you guys think she's amazing. And besides, the family aspect of having a small business is paramount and huge and extremely important. Uh, It can make or break everything. There is nothing worse than having a misalignment in goals uh, with your spouse when you're trying to grow a business. How in the world can you be inspired and driven and motivated and trying to conquer stuff and give everything you got and come home exhausted when you have friction or resentment or uh, pushback at home. It it will cripple everything. Now, it's not because your spouse is bad. It's probably because you're doing a poor job leading and communicating and sharing vision and bringing them into the fold. But we'll, we'll get into that. It's a, it's a complex thing, uh, but it's a powerful thing if you get it right. Not perfect. That's not attainable. But if you get it right, if you improve it. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about something I learned in Russell Brunson's Inner Circle that is really powerful, just the way that it was worded that will apply directly to your business so you can apply this stuff tomorrow. I mean, think about all this stuff on this podcast where you've gotten a nugget here, you've gotten a nugget there, and you immediately applied it the next day, made more money as a direct result, just like that, from what you've heard here. That's really what I'm going for in the podcast. I don't want it just to be fun, entertaining stuff. Like I want it to be actionable, specific, nuts and bolts stuff that you can you know, apply and win with for free. Like right now, the only thing I ask in return for all the goodness and the warm, fuzzy gold nuggets is that you share the podcast, share it in, on LinkedIn, share episodes on Facebook groups, tag me in it. Uh, that helps a huge amount. If you're in a, a weird industry that maybe isn't, isn't uh, you know, a cleaning business or something, but this is still applicable to you, share it in a Facebook group with those people in that industry. You know, I can't reach those people without your help. That is a great reciprocation, a high five back to me or leave me an iTunes review, which you guys are amazing. Uh, they've been, they've went way, way up this year. So anyway, here, here's the, the concept I want to lay out for you. It's called the IAC. IAC. I guarantee you've never heard of this before. And it's a simple but powerful concept. Here's what happens. Small businesses are terrified to spend money to market. Now, they're not terrified to spend like a hundred bucks or maybe a thousand bucks marketing to kind of dabble with something or they'll sponsor a t-ball team or they'll do those little restaurant placemat ads. Yeah, like that's really going to move the needle, right? (laughs) You have this vision to build a two million dollar automated business with health benefits and high salaries for all your middle managers and, and yet today as you stand now, you're like super freaked out to spend like 80 bucks on uh, some sort of little marketing thing. Or no, may, maybe you're freaked out to spend the big money so you will spend 70 or 80 bucks. And you're thinking too small and you're going too small and you're going to get results that are very small. So look, I know that if you don't have money, you can't spend it. Totally get that. That's why I always advise people to invest their time first driving momentum in sales. Once you reach a breaking point and you're about to pass out and collapse, guess what? You're going to have some money because all of your bog marketing, your boots on the ground is going to create this little tidal wave of momentum and you're going to be booking jobs and now you're booked a week out and now you're booked two weeks out and now you're booked three weeks out and you're getting exhausted and you feel pressure. That is the moment in which we want to pivot when we want to go ahead and shift from investing our time into marketing to shifting to, uh, into investing money into our marketing. Okay, with that being said, here's, here's something really cool. If you've heard me, I talk about CAC in the past customer acquisition cost. And there's some misconceptions with how people calculate that and how they understand it. But let me give you like a a 101, college level 101 basic explanation of how customer acquisition cost uh, should work and how people uh, get it wrong, okay? Let's say that your average ticket, your average job value is $500. 
Now let's say that your average profit margin is 30%, okay? That means that out of every average job of $500, your company will clear $150 in profit, which is 30% of 500. Now, that 150, that's really what your whole business is about, is how much profit do we have left after paying the staff and paying the overhead and the gas and the fuel and the insurance and whatever, right? And that 150 is, is, is like everything. Here's the disconnect. Oh, by the way, if you have like a lawn service or a, a maid service and you your average ticket's low, like $30 or $40, use the same concept that I'm talking about, but look at your annual customer value, right? Because the average lawn account was probably like $1,000 or $1,500, but it might only be like $30 or $40 or $50 per cut or something. But the concept's the same. Look at what the average annual value is of, of an average customer and then figure out your average margin. Now, after you take your average you know, ticket for the year or per job, and you multiply it by your average margin, stay with me here, I'm going somewhere, I promise. After you do that, that number, that net profit number, that's what I call your max CAC, your maximum customer acquisition cost. And here's here's the deal. Who would want to do a job and not make any money on it? Anybody? Probably not very many people. But when it comes to building a service business that has repeat clients, don't get confused by this. If I could give you $150 and you give me back an average client, which gives me 500 in revenue and 150 in profit, although really it's zero in profit because I gave you 150 to get them, right? That might make you think that, like that that's a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. It's a free customer. That customer was free. Do you understand? The transaction was free. And in your maximum customer acquisition cost is the maximum number of dollars you should ever want to spend to acquire a brand new shiny repeat customer. I'm not saying that you don't want to get it for lower. Like if you can acquire customers for 75 bucks and it's a 500 average ticket and you clear 150, that's awesome. That just means that you're profitable on the very first transaction, which is amazing because then you can scale even quicker. But even if you weren't profitable on the first transaction, okay, it's okay. This is the biggest difference between the big boys and the little guys that get stuck is that they understand that acquiring a customer for free is perfectly acceptable as a business model, right? Because you're still gonna have repeat customers coming back from last year. You're still gonna have organic people come in and referrals come in and you didn't pay anything to acquire those ones and they're gonna give you enough margin to run your business and take care of business. But when it comes to driving new sales growth, why in the world would you not give me 150 bucks if I gave you a $500 average customer, right? Uh, it just makes sense. But I want to take it a step further to this concept of IAC. Now, a CAC, people call it a CAC because it means CAC, customer acquisition cost. And IAC is what I call an influencer acquisition cost. Now, this, this is really cool, and I'm sure you haven't heard of this. I'm working on something for Send Jim on my end um, called the Dream 100 list. And so what I'm trying to do on the back end of my business to grow it is develop deep relationships with really important or influential people, people who are doorways. Now, I don't, I don't go about this in like a take, take, take kind of way. I just want to know them. They need to know me. We need to begin to have a relationship. Now, these relationships I'm building with my Dream 100 list, it's very strategic. It's organized. I have lists and data and I have like check marks and I follow up and I invest in making touches so that I can get on the phone with them so we can laugh, so I can find common ground and commonality. And maybe in 18 months, one of those doorways will open it up into a million dollars worth of something, right? It's hard to put a, like an exact metric on it because you don't know. But what I do know is that your network is your net worth and that I need to be around these next tier level of people. And if we go back in time a few years, uh, the reason I get some of the guests on the podcast that I have is because I did the same thing. And if you go back a, years, a few years before that, the reason we got a lot of colleges and universities and big accounts with General Motors and all these different uh, places was because we were doing more or less the same concept, this concept of a Dream 100. And it's, it's powerful. So it's a little bit of data mining. It's figuring out who are the most powerful uh, influencers that you could network with that could lead to huge amounts of business for you. Now, now that we have that list, let's talk about IAC. How much are you willing to invest? I'm talking about money. I'm talking about time, like real like assets, like cash. Like would you, would you fly to another state to have lunch with someone? Would you like how far would you take it? 
Well, if you think about customer acquisition costs and compare it to influencer acquisition, acquisition costs, uh, you can kind of come up with some rough idea. If your average customer is worth 500 bucks, right, and your average margin is 30% and you make 150 bucks, how valuable would it be for you to become really good acquaintances, possibly even friends, with the president of a property management company that controlled 2,000 condo units in your state. Would that be valuable? Would that be significant, right? What if you got 15% of those condos, which would be 300 of them? And what if your average ticket of $500 times 300 equals $150,000? Now, what would the margin be? 30% times $150,000, that equals $45,000. So in theory, if you spent 45 grand to network to the person that I just described in my fake scenario, and you got this deal to to kind of come through and they marketed your services to 2,000 condos and 300 of them hired you, and you spent 45 grand for that and you didn't have any margin on the first cleaning or the first service, how valuable would it be to have them for the next 10 or 15 years? Do you see where I'm going with this? We need to raise our level of thinking. Uh, I had a coaching call with someone yesterday and his business had been stuck at a half a million dollars for like four or five years. And that's very common. And the reason it was stuck is because his understanding of how he was supposed to be the leader of his company, the, the way in which the mechanics in which he did his job hadn't changed, right? So maximum effort, doing things a certain way, and he hit a ceiling at at 500K, which is like, great, man. A lot of you guys would like chop off your left arm to get your business that that big, right? But there's a ceiling. And so I asked this person, if you listened to the podcast episode yesterday, I kind of like impressed myself because this is a really cool way to explain it. But I, I asked this person, what if you had previously built a $10 million company from scratch, like in the past, What if that was actually you? You had done that already. You'd already completed the cycle. You built a $10 million service company from scratch. It was automated, systemized, profitable, and you sold it. And then now today, you're you're placed into the position that you're in right now. Can you see how that would, your perspective about what the next step should be and how to do A, B, C, D, E, and F would be different, right? Like if you could view this little $500,000 business that's been stuck for four or five years through the lens, through the eyeballs, through the brain power of someone that had previously accomplished so much, everything would change. Like your next steps would change, how quickly you hired your team would change. You'd have all this certainty and life experience to throw at it. And it really, I think that's what it all comes down to is a lack of certainty. There's a lot of fear. Uh, But if you can just trust your logic enough, this is pure math, pure logic. If you can just trust your logic enough and stop being so scared to spend money to A, acquire customers in the first place and B, uh, spend a lot more money to acquire and get in front of a network with and build real relationships with influencers, you, anything is possible. Absolutely freaking anything is possible. Sometimes you have to pay to get around certain people, right? So I hope that was helpful for you. I, th- I feel like this was kind of a unique piece of content, and I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. Uh, I don't hear anybody talking about it. But in internet marketing circles, this is like a strategy, and it's called the Dream 100. Don't know exactly who invented it, but it's a really important piece for a lot of the people that are in Russell Brunson's inner circle with me, and I'm kind of watching them go about this, and I'm going about it myself too. So anyway, hope that was helpful. Leave me a review on iTunes, share this episode in a group and write a paragraph saying how cool it was and how much you learned and tag me in it. That would be huge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care. God bless. Hey, thanks for hanging out friends. And from all of us here at the quick talk podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.